Hello everyone. Welcome back to X Machines channel. Drinking water is water that is used in drink or food preparation. Potable water is water that is safe to be used as drinking water. Nearly 4.2 billion people worldwide had access to tap water, while another 2.4 billion had access to wells or public taps. To increase access to potable water for people, governments are always looking to develop water infrastructure by building water pipelines. So, have you ever wondered, is there anything special about these drinking water pipes compared to other types of pipes? In this video, X Machines will take you to visit a factory that manufactures ductile iron pipes specialized for drinking water to discover the answer. The melting process begins with raw materials. They are scrap steel that has been shredded and transported by tractors from many places. Scrap metal is moved to the melting area by magnetic crane. The scrap metal then is melted in a tall cylindrical furnace called a cupola. The fuel source of cupola is coke which can produce high temperature and melt rate for pipe production. A small amount limestone which help removal slag from a liquid. The molten iron picks up carbon and sulfur from the coke before exiting the cupola. The low sulfur iron flows continuously from the ladle into a large holding vessel. The iron is poured from the forhard into a large transfer layer which is transported by overhead crane. To remove the oxygen within the molten iron the magnesium is burned in a very volatile reaction. The combination of low sulfur and oxygen allows the graphite or carbon within the iron to form in spherical or nodular shape. The addition of magnesium is one of the major differences from the past. Next step is casting. Ductile pipe is manufactured using the Dell of Oak process. For each casting machine is equipped with a pouring label. The machine operator places a sand head core into the bell into the mold. Sand cores are formed from sand that is bonded together by a resin at an elevated temperature. Sand cores are producing a machine that is very similar to a large waffle iron. The sand and resin mix are placed into the core mold and heated to thermally set or harden. The sand core after approximately one minute the mold is separated. The core is removed cleaned and ready to be used. The mold sand cores are formed from sand that is bonded together by a resin at an elevated temperature. This head core prevents iron from flowing out of the mold and also forms the bell and gasket seating area and the pipe socket. The centrifugal force of the rotating mold keeps iron against the mold wall as it solidifies. Based on the size and class of pipe being cast, the forming process will take 30 to 90 seconds. A bumpy pattern which is called peening on the outside of ductile iron pipe the peen surface on the inside of the mold allows a liquid iron to grab the surface of the mold during casting. In the next step, the still hot pipe is delivered to the annealing oven. Here. The pipe undergoes a heat treatment process after which the pipe is produced to the desired mechanical properties. Ductile iron pipe annealing takes place in a very large natural gas furnace. There the temperature is about 1750 degrees Celsius. As the pipeline moves slowly through the annealing furnace the temperature gradually decreases in the cooling zone to about 1350 degrees Celsius. An incubation cycle takes about 35 to 45 minutes. Quality control is an extremely important step, it takes place throughout the entire production process of the pipes. Right from the starting, the melting metal was analyzed for correct properties of the components that make up the pipe thereby ensuring strict compliance with quality standards. Visual inspection activities to detect defects as well as tests with modern machines such as spectrometers, infrared meters are conducted regularly. The final step is finishing. 
Finishing involves lining the inside of each pipe with a cement mortar and then applying a thin layer of asphalt on the outside and inside for the purpose of lining the ductile iron pipe. This creates a barrier to prevent the accumulation of corrosion products on the pipe wall. Cement lining is similar to the casting process and the pipe is rotated and radial force is used to apply the cement to the pipe wall. Finally, the pipes are loaded onto the truck and ready to be delivered to the customer. During the operation of the pipelines, to ensure the repair of damage but still maintain the normal operation of the pipeline, engineers often apply hot tapping process. Hot tapping is the ability to safely tie into a pressurized system, by drilling or cutting, while it is on stream and under pressure. It involves placing a tapping fitting onto a water main, in addition to a gate or ball valve that will control the water. After the fitting and valve are in place, the main is then tapped, with the valve being closed before the drill is detached. Hot tapping equipment is available for almost any pipeline size, pipe material, and pressure rating found in transmission and distribution systems. The primary equipment for a typical hot tap application includes a drilling machine, a branch fitting, and a valve. Drilling Machine The drilling machine generally consists of a mechanically driven telescoping boring bar that controls a cutting tool. The cutting tool is used to bore a pilot hole into the pipeline wall in order to center a hole saw that cuts out the coupon, or curved section of pipeline wall. Fitting. Connection to the existing pipe is made within a fitting, which can be a simple welded nipple for small connection to a larger pipeline, or a full encirclement split sleeve T for extra support when the branch is the same size as the parent pipeline. The T wraps completely around the pipeline, and when welded, provides mechanical reinforcement of the branch and carrier pipe. Valve. The valve on a hot tap connection can be either a block valve or a control valve for the new connection, and must allow the coupon, section of pipeline wall cut out by the drilling machine, to be removed after the cutting operation. Suitable valves include a ball or gate valve, but not a plug or butterfly valve.
The basic steps to perform a hot tap are. Step 1. Connect the fitting on the existing pipeline by welding, steel, bolting, cast iron, or bonding, plastic, and install the valve. Step 2. Install the hot tap machine through the permanent valve. Step 3. Perform the hot tap by cutting the coupon from the pipeline through the open valve. A special device retains the coupon for removal after the hot tap operation. Withdraw the coupon through the valve and close the valve. Step 4. Remove the tapping machine and add the branch pipeline. Purge oxygen, open the valve, and the new connection is put into service. Hot taps can be vertical, horizontal, or at any angle around the pipe as long as there is sufficient room to install the valve, fitting, and tapping machine. Current technology allows for taps to be made on all types of pipelines, at all pressures, diameters, and compositions, even older pipes merging with new. New, lightweight tapping machines are also available that allow a hot tap to be performed by a single operator, without additional blocking or bracing. This is the end of the video, thanks for watching. Please leave a comment to discuss this topic further. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss other interesting and useful videos from X Machines.